What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Tonight, we got the June 11th edition of Monday Night Raw Review. <laughs> So tonight's Monday Night Raw guys started off with all of the Raw superstars in the Money in the Bank started off. You know, they all started off on ladders in the ring with microphones in their hands. And oh my God, before we even get started, we got to talk about Trash Corbin shaving his head completely bald. I think this is a fantastic move. You guys know that I've been saying this for months now that he should have done it. You know, he had been balding for years and long time and he finally shaved his head. So that is great stuff. He will actually look at somewhat presentable now. Interested to see see if he actually changes his in-ring gear or not. But anyways, Braun Strowman, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, Bobby Roode, Ember Moon, Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss, Natalya all starting out in the ring, each stating their case on why they will win Money in the Bank. You know, just starting, uh, just fighting on top of the ladder saying they're going to win it. It all ended when Braun uh, yelled to interrupt them all and he said that someone on Sunday is going to get these hands and that was the end of the segment. I thought it sort of winded in a weird way. But uh, I feel like uh, Alexa Bliss, Braun Strowman, and Kevin Owens were very strong. I think that they are easily the best three on the mic right here. And they really stood out in this segment. And this is how Monday Night Raw started. So then we would have our first match of the night. A fatal four-way between all of the Raw women's competitors in the Money in the Bank on this Sunday. Ember Moon versus Alexa Bliss versus Nat Natalya versus Sasha Banks. This match was solid for a Raw match. I thought this was a very good match. I enjoyed it. At one point, Sasha just free fell frontward off the turnbuckle out of nowhere. No one knew what happened. It just looked like she did a front flip off the top of the turnbuckle and hit her face on the outside, but it turns out after commercial that she actually was aiming for Natalia and hit her. Didn't really look like a spot at first, but uh, it was, it's just another highlight to go in Sasha's unsafe work habits in the ring. I love her balls to the wall mentality while wrestling, but Jesus Christ, guys, what in the crap was that? But there was a point where Ember Moon hit a sick suicide dive through the ropes to take out Sasha. I enjoyed this match a lot. Lots of good stuff. And Natalia won the match with a sharpshooter to Alexa. Very uh, weird ending. I did not expect Natalia to win. But uh, it's obvious she's not winning on Sunday. We cut to a segment backstage with Kevin Owens and Finn Balor. You know, Kevin Owens was talking to Finn. He offered him some olives. And he says that they both didn't get a rematch they deserve for their Universal Championship. They say that they need to work to, or Kevin tells Finn that they need to work together to keep Braun from winning on Sunday and protect each other in the Fatal 4-Way later tonight. You know, try to take Braun Strowman out so that he can't capture the money in the bank and win the Universal title and hold it forever. He even added, I might could beat him, but it would be so taxing. And I, that just goes to show how much I love Kevin Owens. Attention to detail, you know, he really throws the humor in there and I absolutely love it. We come back and we got the Fashion Police coming to the ring for their match against Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. The Fashion Police were rocking this MDT pink and zebra looking very fresh. I want to add, why in the hell does Dolph Ziggler still have that stupid record scratch at the beginning of his music? Drives me absolutely up the effing wall. But Tyler Breeze grew a beard. You know, this was a squash match. It was literally nothing. Ziggler and McIntyre won with ease. After the match, Ziggler and McIntyre cut a promo. You know, they left the tag team battle royal behind them. And every team on Raw will be destroyed by them. You know, it was a really strong promo. I guess sort of trying to silence the haters. You know, that the fact that they may be breaking up or something like that. They didn't seem too, uh, you know, sensitive tonight. You know, it didn't seem like they were going to break up tonight. They looked very strong in a squash match over the Popo. We cut to a Roman Reigns interview interview backstage. Gender has earned his ass whooping and he says that Gender is an idiot and he's about to crush him. I actually enjoyed this interview. He was being interviewed by the lady and the lady was asking him questions about Gender Mahal. He simply replied that he was a moron and that he deserved the ass whooping that he was about to give him tonight. And uh, I actually like this little interview. I think it sounded nice and it was a good segment for Roman Reigns. Come back from commercial and we have Jinder Mahal versus Roman Reigns. Jinder gets on the mic and he says that he's not fighting and he made it sound like the great Khali was about to come out and fight Roman. You know, he made it sound like that. He was making jokes and stuff. And then it turns out that he was going to allow Sunil Singh to get in the ring and challenge Roman Reigns tonight. Roman obviously squashes Sunil and then Jinder attacks Roman from behind after the match and they go up the ramp and dilly dally. Literally, this was nothing but an extra build to their match on Sunday, which I don't think anybody gives a crap about. Come back and it's the B team taking on Heath Slater and Rhino. The B team pretty much squashes Heath Slater and Rhino, and uh, the B team's running around, you know, they're running around celebrating and all that jazz, and then Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy interrupt their celebration. They cut a promo on them, talking about their match coming up at Money in the Bank, you know, how they're going to delete them and then eat them. The next segment was an Elias concert, you know, your typical Raw Elias 
last concert, and then you already knew what happened. Seth Rollins interrupts, you know, he starts cutting his promo, talking about how Elias is a coward. Then Seth begins auctioning off Elias' guitar, and you know, the crowd's really into it, they're going nuts, and then finally, uh, Seth curb stomps the guitar and breaks it, and then he continues to play the broken guitar as Seth Rollins' Burn It Down music is playing. I thought it was a sick little thing that he did. We then to cut to Kevin Owens trying to recruit Bobby Roode now to team with him and Finn to take out Braun in their fatal four-way later on, you know, trying to eliminate Braun Strowman to keep him from even competing at Money in the Bank so that he cannot capture the briefcase. Out comes Bailey to the ring. We got Bailey versus Ruby Riot. Just your regular, ordinary women's Raw match. The Riot Squad would distract Bailey, throw her into the turnbuckle, I believe, and then Ruby did indeed beat Bailey. Uh, I don't know why they threw this in there. I guess just to give you know Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad some more momentum and further squashing and burying Bailey. Next, we had our trash Ronda Rousey and Nia Jax segment. Didn't even really pay attention to this, guys. I didn't really care about it. I did not care one single bit. But, uh, you know, Jonathan Coachman was in the ring talking and asking questions and all this jazz. And, uh, you know, to make a long story short, Rousey locked in the armbar on Jax and she tapped out. And then Jax rolled out of the ring. And Raz Rousey just stood there, put her jacket back on, and her music played. So, obviously, Jax cannot, you know, prevent Ronda Rousey from locking in the armbar, which was the whole point of this whole stupid match going forth, and uh, I think that Ronda Rousey will easily win on Sunday. Next up, we had a match between No Way Jose, my boy, taking on Kurt Hawkins, who has literally lost 200 matches in a row. Kurt Hawkins did not come out to his music, you know, No Way Jose's in the ring, like, what's going on, asking the referee. Kurt Hawkins comes out of the conga line, disguised as one of the members of Jose's conga line, rolls up Jose from behind, but Jose did kick out and then finish off Hawkins in a squash match, so No Way Jose extends Kurt Hawkins' losing streak to 201. Next, we had some stupid, idiot, dumb, awful Sami Zayn and Bobby Lashley segment like I knew it would happen. Uh, Sami Zayn brought out this big obstacle course, you know, about the army thing. This literally made, made no sense to me, guys. He literally said that all these people sent pictures of Bobby Lashley from the army because, you know, last week he questioned if Bobby was even in the army and he got really pissed off. So Sami was like, you know, I had all these documentations and pictures sent to me that Bobby Lashley, you know, had been in the army. And then he brings out this obstacle course, and he's like, if he can run through this obstacle course faster than me, then I'll believe that he's in the army. And that is just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But uh, anyways, he gets Bobby to run the uh, thing. He does it with ease. He runs through the obstacle course right as he's finishing. Sammy attacks Bobby from behind. And uh, it, it was just a terrible segment and just made no sense. And just Bobby Lashley's very just plain and just awful on the mic. And Sami Zayn's great, but he is going to get squashed on Sunday at Money in the Bank. It's main event time. We got the Fatal 4-Way. Braun Strowman versus Finn Balor versus Bobby Roode versus Kevin Owens. The final meeting between these guys before we see them in action at Money in the Bank. Braun throw these pretty much just a regular match to start off and then Braun gets they make their way up to the stage Braun throws these guys into the mini Tron he tries to put KO through the announce table but Bobby hits Braun Strowman with a ladder taking him out Bobby and Balor then start to beat up Braun Strowman together they beat him onto the announce table Bobby Roode and Finn Balor would then hold a ladder for Kevin Owens to go up to the top Bail off with a frog splash onto Braun Strowman, putting him through the announce table. I love that. I like that they actually threw in some extreme spots right here. Great little stuff right there. I don't remember the last time we saw a ladder announce table spot on Monday Night Raw, so that was great to see. Uh, we come back from break, and Bobby Roode and Finn Balor are in the ring after that frog splash from Kevin Owens to Braun Strowman. Uh, you know, after a little while, KO finally gets into the action, and then after a little while after that, Braun Strowman finally gets up and gets into the action. Uh, Strowman did this, you know, his around the world spot where he goes around and smashes everybody. He hit Finn with one, he hit Bobby with one, and then he hits Kevin Owens so hard with a shoulder block that he literally did a backflip. I thought that was so sick. Kevin Owens just proving once again why he's so amazing. But uh, we go into the finish here. Braun gets hit with a coup de gras. Uh, Bobby Roode interrupts the pin, throws Finn Balor out, hits Braun with a glorious DDT, goes for the cover. Kevin Owens throws Bobby Roode out. Then uh, Kevin Owens climbs up to the top, hits Braun Strowman with a frog splash. So he took a coup de gras, a glorious DDT, and a frog splash and kicks out. I just thought that was awful. That's way too strong in my opinion. Just, just, It's just Roman Reigns booking out here. But uh, anyways, Braun would then power slam Kevin Owens onto a ladder. One, two, three. 
Braun Strowman wins the Fatal 4-Way match going into Money in the Bank, and uh, I don't really know what to say. Monday Night Raw wasn't too terrible tonight. Not too many cringy stuff happened. Some good wrestling. It wasn't a terrible little time, but... Uh, that pretty much does it for your June 11th edition of Monday Night Raw, guys. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I plan on doing this every single Monday Night Raw, and I tr I'm trying to do this for every SmackDown Live as well, and including pay-per-views. So uh, definitely stay tuned. Let me know down in the comment section if you would like to see these reviews going forward with the figures. And I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.